Hey dudes, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Bailey and in today's video I'm doing a little bit of an updated Q&A and kind of an update on just kind of what's to come for this channel um, as we transition into not really having as many litters and focusing on becoming parents. But I did ask over on my Instagram at the Rosemary Doodles for you guys to ask me questions. So if you don't follow me on there, you definitely should so you can be involved in these Q&As. I don't have a ton, but I do have some really good ones. So I'm going to answer them for you today. So if you're new here and you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit a thumbs up as well as hit that subscribe button down below. And without further ado, let's just get into today's video. So obviously we don't have puppies right now. We're going to be having puppies around August, hopefully, fingers crossed, if Henley gets pregnant. So we are going to have the summer off from puppies, but I do want to continue to get some video content up for you guys. So I thought a Q&A would be a good way to do that. I haven't really looked at a lot of the questions. I kind of grazed over them, and a lot of them kind of take some planning and actual, like, thorough thinking. So I'm going to do the best I can. But the first one is... What will the 2025 litters look like? So if you missed my last video, I am pregnant and expecting a baby girl in November. So we are going to be having one last litter of 2024. Um, and then we are going to be taking a break and not having any more puppies until 2025. Sorry that my camera keeps going in and out. I don't know why the focus is so off today. Anywho, we are going to be taking a break until 2025. And most likely, so if she's born early November, so December, January, February, March, April, the earliest we'd probably have puppies is around April time frame. Now that could possibly change depending on when mom's coming to heat and what we decide. But for now, that's kind of the idea slash goal is to start having litters again in the spring. Once again, mother nature, we're kind of at the mercy of her. So I am going to be sitting down and roughly planning some litters as far as like mom's, dad's time frame, et cetera, for 2025. So we can have people still like getting on those litters and getting excited and ready for those litters. So I'm just going to pull up my website on my phone and look at our dogs in our program, which that's also another question is an update. But if I had to guess for 2025, we will be having an Ellie times Cooper litter again, most likely potentially Ellie times Ollie. It'll just depend on some logistics and if he passes his health testing and kind of what I'm thinking. If we do have an Ellie Ollie litter, that'll probably be our only standard size litter. Or we will do a Hazel Times Cooper litter. So we probably will only do one of those two. Probably won't do both. So that's kind of a potential for early 2025 slash, I guess, 2025 in general. Then we will also hopefully be having a Honey litter in 2025 a Millie litter in 2025 and did I say Riley and also a Riley litter in 2025. I do not know exactly who those dogs are going to be paired with exactly as far as the stud goes. Um, honey, I'm definitely going to use Ollie. Millie, I'm definitely going to use Whiskey, the stud that's already on the website. With Riley, I'll probably use Ollie and then Hazel and Ellie, it'll just depend. I might do one and not the other or I might try to breed Hazel with a smaller um, stud instead of Cooper for standards um, and do like a smaller litter. We will see. And then I also do have another, like a couple other upcoming moms that might be ready. Like Ruby could potentially be ready, but I'll probably wait until 2026 slash late 2025 before I do anything with her. Also, my dogs are outside and you probably hear them whining in the back. It's actually Indy, but you would think if they're outside, they would be having fun and playing because they beg me to go outside. They sit at the door. They bark at lizards. They want to go outside, and literally the second I let them outside, if I don't go with them, they want to come back in. So if you hear Indy whining, that is who's whining. But, yeah, that's kind of the goals or, like, I guess the planned litters for 2025, kind of what I'm expecting to do or what I'm kind of looking at doing. So someone asked, do you have any goals with your breeding career? Definitely have goals with my breeding career. I definitely think everyone should have goals with anything they do in life. Um, right now, a big goal of ours is to turn our 3,200-square-foot building on our property into our dog breeding business and where we house our litters, potentially do boarding and things like that. That is actually something I wanted to update you guys on. That's hopefully going to be something we're going to be doing here soon and vlogging for you guys and taking you guys along the process and going to be something that we work on while we're taking a break. So even though we won't be having litters, we will be working on that and I definitely want to bring you guys along for that. So that would definitely be a big goal of mine is to get the studio. We call it the studio because my mom used to use it as a photography studio, but it'll technically be like the dog barn now. But to get that ready for having our 2025 litters inside of there. So concrete getting poured, fences getting put up, 
um, painting inside, getting a washer and dryer hookup. Like that's kind of all things we're going to be doing to get that place prepared to house Rosemary Doodles. Um, I love having the puppies just here in our home, like right in our garage that we've transformed into the dog room. But as we grow, as my family expands and grows, we just kind of need that space back. And this is just the perfect space. I'm literally sitting in my living room and I can literally see it right now. It's like literally a 500 foot walk if that over to the building so it's still super close um still get to be very involved with the program and stuff but also allows me to bring in people and maybe hire some help as well when needed because it's not going to be them coming into my home which I didn't love the idea of when it comes to hiring help so that's a big reading goal of ours is to get that place and space ready to house puppies um and just in general I think just Good breeding goals to have is just continue to better the breed continue to get better dogs in my program produce better puppies um temperament wise looks wise etc i think that's always a breeder's goal or at least should be um and i think i'm doing a really good job at getting there by some of the upcoming um, puppies that we do have in our program someone asked would you ever consider breeding poodles no i don't plan on breeding anything but multi-generational golden doodles at this point she also asked, when is the next F1B litter? I don't really do F1Bs or F1s or anything like that. That was another question is, will I ever breed first generations? I don't have any plans for that. I like the consistency that you can get when breeding multi-generationals. Um, most of my dogs do have at least 20% of golden retriever in them, if not more. It's my goal to make sure all my dogs eventually have at least 30%. That's a big breeding goal of mine is to have a higher percent of golden retriever in my golden doodle lines. That's a goal we're working towards. And we're pretty close to but yeah i don't plan on breeding f1b's um and also to go along with this it's which generation of doodle has the most curly hair um it's not it really doesn't go with generation it more so goes with coat curl and furnishings when it comes to curl so you can have an f1b be super curly but you can also have a multi-generational be super curly obviously with your f1 you're gonna not really have super curls um but when you're looking at genetics of a dog on embark i'll kind of pop up a little screen of that right now and what that kind of looks like TT, at least in Embark, is curl. So you know that puppy's going to be very curly, especially if they're fully furnished. They're going to have the full furnishings would be super curly. Um, CT is wavy. CC is straight. But furnishings relates to how fluffy that dog is. Kind of That's kind of a good way to explain it to someone who doesn't really know what I'm talking about is the fluff around their face and just how fluffy their body gets. If you see a dog with improper coat, a lot of times they'll have like really slick legs and slick muzzle or even um one furnishing and not two furnishings they'll have more of a wiry coat more of a slick back muzzle muzzle like less fur on their legs so you're definitely going to be wanting to look at those genetics not necessarily generation when it comes to but any breeder who has any sense and is doing this the right way should have the genetics to be able to tell you hey this puppy's going to be curly this puppy's going to be wavy this puppy's going to be straight and prepare you for the type of coat that your puppy that you're bringing home is going to have um, if it's a backyard breeder who doesn't do any of that, they're probably not going to have a clue. They probably won't have any knowledge whatsoever anyway and won't be able to tell you. But it really does not correlate with generation at all. You can have F1Bs, multi-generationals, etc. that have curly hair. Um, the only generation you're not going to get like super kinky curls is an F1. Also, I did have a couple questions specifically about me and Matt and our pregnancy. And I'm not going to be answering those on this channel. I'm going to be doing a QA and a on our channel, Matt and Bailey, hopefully soon, answering some of those questions. So if you want to follow along on that journey with us, you definitely want to subscribe over there because I'm not going to bring that content over to this channel. I'm going to keep it completely separate. So definitely subscribe over there if you do want any updates on like my pregnancy. I'm hopefully going to be doing like a first trimester recap, all sorts of things over there. So definitely follow us over on that channel. Someone asked if I still groom my own dogs. No, currently I do not groom my own dogs. I trim them up every now and then, but I do have them going off weeks to the groomer two and two go. Um, just being pregnant, being in my first trimester, having kids, it's just not something I enjoy doing. It's not something I want to do. Um, so no, I do not groom my own dogs anymore. I have all the things that I do every now and then like groom moms when they come to me. Like I definitely do that still, but as far as my own personal dogs, they go to a groomer every eight weeks. Someone asked if Harlow was still with us because they haven't seen her a lot. Yes, all 
Four of my dogs still currently live with me. So Harlow lives with me, Indy lives with me, Jagger lives with me, and then Ellie lives with me, but she's actually gonna be going and probably staying with my sister up in Raleigh where she goes to school. She has a Husky and he really needs a friend. Ellie really likes the extra attention that she gets when she's with Lainey and her boyfriend. So I think Ellie is going to go back up to school with um, Lainey when she goes back in August. We did a little trial run right before she came home for the summer. So right now she is with us, but she will probably kind of go back and forth because I think it's good for her to be here with us and at the home she's used to but also get a little bit extra attention with Lainey and her boyfriend and all that so we do still have all four of those dogs and we do still love them all very much but that's kind of what we're doing there um someone asked will you miss breeding during your break yes but I think it's gonna be a good break I don't really think we're gonna have time to miss breeding because I'm gonna be postpartum and having a newborn so I definitely will miss it and miss the business side of it but in the marketing side and all that and the puppies but I'm gonna be so focused on other things like I highly doubt I even think about it much someone asked for poodle breeder recommendations that they wanted something like us the only one I really know that I would recommend is my friend's red door canines they breed multiple different breeds of dogs poodles Bernese mountain dogs um golden doodles bernie doodles etc and i know they have a litter of poodles right now with a couple still available and they have a couple poodle litters throughout the year so i would definitely check them out someone also asked if i could do an update on all my past litters like maybe a video of them i just think that's a little too much so i probably will never do that um if you do want updates you could check their highlights or watch my stories because i will post updates every now and then on there but that would just be a lot a lot of families like I don't stay in touch with as much and then other families I hear from like all the time also so it would kind of be hard to get updates on everybody someone asked favorite part of litters I love the whelping process I love whelping which is crazy because I like hate everything to do with like medical stuff but as far as whelping I love the whelping process I think it's so fun so enjoyable seeing what the puppies look like their gender that would definitely be probably my favorite part of breeding overall one of our past puppy family someone who I love this is someone who literally I keep in contact with, contact with all the time Julia with Jackson she asked who's my heart dog I would probably have to say Indy just because she is my first dog she is the reason Rose and Reed doodles got started but also she like we butt heads also like we drive each other crazy um but I think that kind of has to do with being my heart dog but I would probably say just Indian Jagger in general they just both have an equal amount of really like specialness to them and I just love them they're my babies and I don't know I love all my dogs but definitely Indian Jagger just hold a little bit of a different special bond with me and Matt than the other ones Another past puppy family asked if they saw us shifting or if we saw ourselves shifting more towards minis instead of standard litters. And then I had another question pretty similar to this. Um, I think they were asking, um, yeah, temperament, difference in temperament in minis and standards. And also what made me decided to breed minis because I said once I did not want to. So yes, I plan on shifting more towards mini mediums instead of standard size. But for me, Unless obviously there's outliers in the litter, I'm only going to be breeding mini, so around 25 pounds at the lowest. I don't plan on breeding any type of tinies or petites or anything like that because I just don't think a lot of times you can get the temperament that I like in those breeds. Also, I've been very, 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 very specific about the mini moms that I bring into my program. Henley is one of our mini moms and she has a phenomenal temperament. She actually is an F1B, so she actually has a lot of golden retrievers still in her and a lot of standard still in her poodle-wise. So I don't find her temperament hardly any different than my standards. And then Millie, who is around 20, 25 pounds, she's got over 40% golden retriever in her and some standard in her as well. She just happened, both Henley and Millie are minis, but just happened to be, like Henley was supposed to be a medium. Millie was supposed to be a mini, but they just happened to be the smallest in their litter and just not grow to be as big. But both of them have really great temperaments, not similar to what you think of when you think of a small dog personality. So I've been very, very particular on the mini moms I bring in to my program and where I get them from to make sure I'm still getting one, the golden retriever percentage integrity in my minis, but also the personality that we all know and love in a, you know, a golden doodle, which is friendliness, playfulness, you know, not yappiness, things like that. So I think if you want to breed smaller dogs, you just have to be very cautious about the moms you bring into your program, the dads you choose to breed with, and their overall temperaments. Because I find doing that, I don't have a ton. Like, I love the minis 
in my program just as much as my standards because they don't have very different temperaments because I've been very specific about their temperaments and what I bring into my program. So I hope that makes sense. But yes, I do see myself shifting more towards medium and mini. So mini is around 25 to 35 pounds and then medium is around 35 to 45 pounds, mainly because it's just more convenient. The older I've gotten to, like especially having Henley around so much, with kids and just traveling, it is hard to have really big dogs. I have four dogs over 55, 60 pounds, and it's very difficult. They take up a lot of room. It just kind of makes more sense practically for families to have smaller dogs, but I do not plan to ever not breed standards. I just don't plan to breed as many litters of standards per year because I do still think there is a good market for standards and people who do still truly want like a big standard size doodle. So I don't plan to ever cut that out of my program. I just plan to focus more probably the most on mediums, but then having minis here and standards there. Um, but yeah, I just think it's really important as a breeder to not let go of the integrity of your dog's temperaments to get smaller dogs because they sell better or because they're more desired, if that makes sense. And I think a lot of breeders just jump on the bandwagon of breeding minis because it's what's popular, it's what's selling. And for me, it just took me a while because I wanted to be very specific about how I went about that and the type of mini moms and dads I brought into my program. Someone asked how much are our puppies. Our puppies were 3,000 overall, but we've changed that a little bit since we are going to be a little bit more specific on sizing. So I don't know if we're going to like make this final. I think it is on the website, but I'm thinking of changing it to standards 2,500, mediums 2,800, and minis 3,000. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. But as of now, all of our dogs all together are 3,000. Okay. Someone asked, please go over all your dogs. I'm lost with all the new upcoming puppies. And I thought this would be something super fun to do. I'm going to slide over a little bit so I could pop up pictures and all that stuff over in this corner for the moms that we have in our program and then the dads so you guys could catch up. And I'm going to kind of just be looking at my phone over um, at our website to kind of track that. So first, as far as these are current dogs in our program, not dogs that are retired. Um, so we have Ellie Rain. So Ellie is the daughter of Indy, one of our, like our matriarch, Indy Rose. If you've been here a long time, you know exactly who she is. Um, she is the daughter of Indy. She's an F1B standard and she is one of our current standard moms. And I bred Ellie. I did want to say that, that I bred Ellie. She came from our program with Indy and outside stud. So she is born and bred Rosemary Doodle. Then we have Henley. Henley came from a really good outside breeder friend of ours down in South Carolina. She is our very first mini mom. She's fantastic. She's beautiful. Love her. She's probably one of my favorite dogs in our program. Then we have Millie. Millie came from another good breeder friend of ours, Red Door Canines, that I mentioned earlier. She is a mini size golden doodle who ended up just being a little bit more mini than expected. But she is an upcoming mom for us. She actually is a hidden Merle, so I'm excited to see like what we can produce with her litters. It's going to be more like really fun to breed her with, you know, different studs and see what all we could get with her litters. So that's Millie. And then we have Honey. Honey is another Rosemary Doodle bred um, doodle. She's actually another daughter of Indy and she is out of Oliver, which we had two litters with Indy and Oliver. So she is a really pretty upcoming medium mom for us. She's really short and stocky and has that really pretty like stocky build that I really love in a golden doodle and then we have riley riley is a medium sized golden doodle and she is from another really good breeder friend of, of mine um more up north so that is where riley comes from and we're just these next moms like millie that i've mentioned uh honey riley and hazel i'm about to talk about hazel they all have their health testing done we're just kind of waiting on them to come into heat and be able to breed them with what works with our timing um, so that's why you haven't seen litters from them yet, but they are of age and have passed their OFA health testing. And then we have Hazel, who is another Rosemary Doodle bred girl. She is from Dolly and an outside stud, and she lives with the guard. All these girls also live with Guardian Homes, besides Ellie. Um, but yeah, she is a red and white party. She is super duper pretty. I'm waiting on Hazel to mature a little bit. She matured, has matured a little bit slower. She's a little bit of a wild girl, which her mom was like that, but... Like, she just has a longer puppy face, I would say. Um, and that's true for a lot of standards. So, I'm kind of waiting on her to mature a little bit before we move forward with breeding her. But she is just absolutely stunning. And then we have upcoming moms. These are moms that have not underwent their OFA health testing. So, they're not, or they're not old enough. Um, 
We have Ruby, which is actually our first golden doodle that we've held back from our program. That is one, a granddaughter to Indy, and two comes from dogs, both in our program. So she's an Ellie and Cooper baby. She, like I said, is Indy's granddaughter. So she's a second generation Noel, like Rosemary doodle. And she's gorgeous. She's got a great personality. Um, super duper sweet. She's going to be doing her health testing um, middle of July. Then we have Leia. Leia is a gorgeous mini size golden doodle that we brought in from Cooper's same breeder, which another great friend of mine. You'll see I don't really buy my dogs from people I don't know or breeders I'm not friends with because I just find that I could trust these breeders and they have really good dogs. So I really am really particular and selective on who I buy my dogs from. So Leia is from that breeder. They are out of New Mexico and like I said, the same breeder from Cooper. She's gorgeous. I cannot wait to see her puppies. And then we have Charlotte and Charlotte is a dog bred by us um, and actually from Cooper as well. So she is a Tilly and Cooper puppy. So Tilly is one of our retired moms. Um, she was fantastic. Charlotte, from one of her from her guardian family, I'm actually going to be keeping her towards the end of July. But from one of her from them, she is amazing. She's doing great. Tilly had amazing personality. So did Cooper. So I'm super excited for her future puppy. She will be a small standard. So we'll probably be like either a small standard or medium sized mom for us. And then lastly, for upcoming moms, we have Dakota. And Dakota is a Henley daughter that we kept from her most recent uh, litter. Once again, super gorgeous. Really beautiful. It was Henley and an outside stud that we used. Um, so that is where Dakota comes from. But she was one of our puppies that we did raise. And then as far as retired moms, we have Indy, Tilly, Dolly, and Hattie. So all of those moms are retired. But we do have... Um, puppies from each of them in our program besides Hattie. So next up is the boys in our program. We definitely don't have as many boys by far at all as we do girls. Um, we obviously have Jagger who lives with us and is just the funkle. He never had puppies. He was neutered at a young age. Um, he's just one of our boys. And then we have Cooper who is our main stud here. My camera's about to die. He's our main stud. We love him. He came from that great breeder down in New Mexico that Leia also came from that we have a really good relationship with. He's gorgeous. He's a small standard. We have an upcoming son, Ollie, who is a Henley son from her very first litter. He's around 37 pounds now, full grown. And we're going to be doing his OFAs in July as well. So I'm super excited to see his puppies. And then we also have Briggs, who sired a couple litters for us. And also, actually just one litter for us and then some outside litters. But we did decide to go ahead and retire him. So he recently was neutered. Um, so that is all our boys. We are looking to hopefully add a true like mini size male hopefully here soon in the near future, but just keeping our options open. But so far that is all the dogs in our program. I know there's quite a few, but we like having many different options and not like we're not breeding all these moms at the same time, but we do have options, um, and are able to kind of pick and choose kind of what we want to have and see in our program. So I'm really happy with how our program has grown the dogs we've been able to produce and also bring in. So I'm really grateful for that. And I think we're at a really good spot, but my camera's going to die. So I'm going to go charge it and then we'll be back. Okay. So it's a lot later as you can tell by the lighting. It is 8.20. I am watching my foster daughter try to put herself to sleep on the monitor. So if you hear that in the background or see me looking down, that is what I am doing. But I ended off earlier because my battery is dying and I actually don't have a ton of more questions to get through. Um, but I'm going to pull them up real quick and try to get through them real quick so we can end this vlog. Um, let me see where we ended off on. Last, I was going over all the dogs in our program. I think I did a good job at that. Um, a lot of people were asking for updates on the Happily Ever After litter. Updates kind of are true for what I said earlier. If you want updates on our previous puppies, you should just follow along on Instagram. We'll post stories and pictures of them on there. Um, but we rarely do like a full video full of updates just because it's hard to get that from some people. Some people don't care to share a ton of info. So that's the best way to see updates on any of our litters or puppies is through Instagram. Um, someone asked how old do we make our girls um, like earliest heat that we'll breed them on. A lot of times we will breed them as long as they are a year and a half and have had their like one heat before this and also have all their OFAs done. So if they're over like right at a year and a half, they've had all their 
um, OFA is done and they're mature enough. Also, we look at individual maturity. And then also, like I said, they um, have had at least one heat cycle prior. We will normally breed them around that time. But a lot of it has to deal with um, our timeline for breeding and what our families want more so than like, okay, if females in heat, we're out automatically breeding her. Like we look at a lot when it comes to deciding if we're going to breed a female or not. And we do skip heats quite often. Someone asked, is our program at where we want it? If not, what are the characteristics you'd like? I would say pretty close. It's come very far and I'm very proud of it. Once again, we're still working to build um, the dogs in our program, making sure that most of the dogs in our program have a good quality of golden retriever. Sorry, I don't know why it's not focusing. There we go. Has a good quality amount of like golden retriever, blocky, bulkier structure, straighter, wavy, pretty coats. We'd like to get a little bit more white markings in our program as far as the tuxedo look, but I'm not focused on that as much as I used to be. Uh, I'm more focused on those other traits and qualities that I just mentioned, but I think a lot of our moms have that and are going to produce that. We just got to wait till they get old enough to be able to see what they can produce. Um, when will honey go into heat? So this kind of goes with why we're only having one more litter this year. So honey was supposed to come into heat in the like end of May. And so far she has not come into heat yet. And that means if we bred her within the next, like say she came to heat today, we wouldn't be able to breed her for another week to 10 days. So her due date wouldn't be until like end of August and puppies wouldn't go home till end of October. I am due the very beginning of November. So I am not trying to have puppies when I am due. If I go early, I could have puppies. Like it's just cutting it too close for comfort. So unfortunately we're not gonna be breeding her or Millie this go around because of their delayed heat cycles they both were already supposed to be in heat um, and it sucks but we just have to do what's best for us and our family and unfortunately that means not getting any litters from Honey or Millie this year and only getting a Henley litter to round off this year which I'm really sad about but in the end it's for the best and I'm super excited to see their puppies in 2025 I don't I'm sorry I don't know why we're focusing so bad Okay, my camera's focus is just really off today, so I'm sorry about that. Someone asked how many dogs do we own or that's in our, like, program considering, or, like, also counting guardian homes. I don't know, but I did go through all the dogs earlier, so you could count, but a pretty good amount, but not, like, terrible or anything either. Someone asked if I'll be keeping any more of the future Dams or Sires myself, or do I prefer having guardian homes? I 100% prefer having guardian homes. In my opinion, there's no way with the life we live to be able to give each individual dog the attention they deserve if they all lived with us, and I don't really love the kennel environment as far as, like, a dog's day-to-day -day living circumstances so we will always utilize guardian homes i love all my dogs but as their time comes i doubt i will add any more dogs into my own home um i love my dogs but it can be a lot so i do not plan on having any like at my home unless there was like a special circumstance oh i think this is going to be the last one um because the other ones are just repeats um of the same question but it says how's life with all the dogs and can you do an updated day in the life with all the dogs Yes, I can definitely do that. If you have any other video suggestions that you'd like to see on our channel while we don't have puppies, definitely comment them down below because I'm always looking for new ideas. So I can definitely do that here soon. But yeah, it's good. Like I said, it's definitely been a learning curve going from having four dogs to also having four dogs and our foster daughter. Um, it's really different when you have kids trying to manage your time. I mean, obviously my dogs are still my world, but you now have a child who's also your world. So like sometimes, unfortunately, the dogs do just kind of get the back burner. But I am home like all the time. So my dogs get a lot more attention than your average dogs. They go outside multiple times a day to play Frisbee, to explore on our property. So I'd say they have a pretty good life overall. Um, but yeah, everything's going good. Someone also asked how I think they'll do when the baby gets here. And I think they'll do really well. Um, they've done really well with our foster daughter and have never had issues with her. Their main thing is just knowing boundaries like Harlow and Indy and well, it's more so like Harlow and Ellie. They like don't know boundaries as far as like licking the face, licking the hands, all that. Like they would just slobber her to death if they could. Indy and Jagger are a little bit better about being more standoffish and not being all up in the baby's face. But Harlow and Ellie definitely struggle with that a little bit more. So it's definitely been a learning curve, but they've done good with her. So I don't know why they wouldn't do good with the new baby. Um... And she does really good with them as well. So, fingers crossed that it'll be the same for this new baby as well. But I think that's all for today's video. Um, all the questions that you guys asked. Um, like I said, leave me some video suggestions down below. Once again, 
We're only going to have one more litter this year, but I am going to try really, really, really hard to get some content out for you guys like I was in the past with this litter since it will be our last litter of the year. And like I said, I don't know when I'm going to be getting content out on me and Matt's channel because I am just so busy, but fingers crossed soon. So if you do want to see more of our personal life, more about this pregnancy, this baby, definitely follow us over there. It's at Matt and Bailey. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye dudes.